Hey there, 2020 is almost over, and I'm not really sure why I'm so excited for January 1st, 2021, because I'm sure there will be a bunch of New Year's Eve parties and pandemic spreading and a bunch of horrible things still happening, but I think everybody just wants 2020 to f*** off. Just about one year ago, I put on this exact same shirt and I told you about the best music software that came out in 2019. And in the beginning of that video, I gave you some highlights of things that happened in 2019. And I would do that with 2020, but I don't want to start drinking this early in the day. So let's just go right into the software. Before we get into this, I want to let you know that I haven't been paid or sweet talked or groomed or bribed by any of the companies or the developers that are about to be featured in my little award list. This is just my personal valuation and recommendation of the best software that came out in 2020 that will help you make music. So let's go. Baby Audio is a newer company that has quite a few gems already, and I believe their newest release is an extreme parallel compressor. That sounds pretty great. but. The plugin that I like and use the most from them is Super VHS. There are a lot of tape warping emulations and VST effects out there, and none of them sound legitimate to me, including this one. There's a reason why I have a whole bunch of tape machines and four tracks around here. There are just some things that computers can't do accurately yet, and that's one of them. But what Super VHS does amazingly is actually what I would expect a chorus modulation effect to do. And I actually like it more than any of the chorus plugins I have. It just adds a certain character and musicality to whatever I pump through it. For what it was intended to do, retro 80s lo-fi emulation effects, it does that really well. And I can't really name anything that does a better job than Super VHS. But for me, rather than slamming an entire track through it for that Stranger Things vibe, I would much rather just gently put it on top of something like a cymbal or an electric piano. It's 50 bucks, definitely worth it in my opinion. You could sometimes catch it on sale. Something I frequently do is pester companies asking them for a coupon code so I could give it to you, my viewers, so you could get a little bit of a discount from watching this channel. And Baby Audio actually said yes, so you could get 10% off by using the code. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, so I'll put it somewhere on the screen. How about right, right there in my chest? I also have a link in the description. Number four, ARS Memoriam, or ARS Memoriam, probably not called Ars Memoriam, whatever it's called. It is part of a $15 module pack for VCV Rack called the Polymath Suite. And if you're not familiar with VCV Rack, you definitely need to check out my video on that or any video on that and get familiar with it because it is a massive and wonderful, fully functional virtual modular synthesizer for your computer. And it is also free. In my real life, tangible, physical modular synthesizer, I am a huge fan of the Polyand preset module, which is marketed as a module that stores and blends between presets. But what I really love about that module is that area between two presets can turn your very simple sounding synth patch into this weird, wild, and inspiring analog soup. And naturally, I was pretty bummed out that I couldn't do such a thing on VCV Rack until now. Ars Memoriam is not a clone or emulation of the Polyon preset module, but the two of them do share that sort of idea of morphing between two presets if you patch through that main module. And that's actually a really good way of patching because you always sort of have this little chaos or character knob anyway that I guess just helps things sound more interesting. If you're like me and download the hundreds of free VCV Rack modules and never spend a dime on any of them, I recommend this be your first purchase should you ever decide to cross that line where you support the developers in the tiny and tightly knit community of virtual modular synthesizers. And I'm just realizing now that I really, really need to go VCV rack module shopping. Drum replacers are nothing new, and the idea is traditionally pretty simple. You take the isolated input from, let's say, a snare drum, and every single time that snare drum is hit above a certain threshold, a drum replacer will trigger a sample. UVI, I guess, asks themselves, why should drum replacers be limited to single channels? And this solution was no easy task, but it lies in analyzing your input in real time using machine learning. So now you can literally record yourself playing a beat with pens on your desk 
and turn it into a TR-808 or a real sounding drum kit or literally anything that you want. It's worth noting that this plugin isn't always going to work like a magic trick. You should definitely check out UBI's tutorials to figure out how to optimize your inputs and outputs. So while this opens up this playground that is extremely fun and innovative to experiment with, the more objective and obvious use would be if you had a drum recording from an overhead mic and you had a weak kick or a weak hi-hat, you could completely replace those with something that you liked more without having to have every single channel mapped out. And that's huge. Vital just came out and I can guarantee you that by the time this video was uploaded, people are already going to be calling it a serum killer. And I guess if we live in some weird Lord of the Flies universe where only one VST instrument can exist, serum was killed like five years ago and there's a long line of plugins just shooting its corpse in the head. For the record, I have no idea why anybody in the right mind would look at VST instruments this way if the user experience didn't matter and if that subjective part was missing, then why are we all not just coding our songs in machine language? I think Vital's gonna be a hit and I think for a lot of the people that watch this channel, this is the synth that you are watching this video to find out about. And the reason for that is because it does something that we all are familiar with doing in other plugins, such as modulating between wavetables, but it absolutely perfects the user interface and optimization. Once you know what's what, you can start creating and sculpting sounds a lot faster and more efficiently, and the reason for that is innovative features that you probably won't even notice. For example, you could click on a modulation source and hover over different values and sort of shop around for what you want it to affect, and you could hear that in real time, and when you release the mouse button, then it assigns it. This makes a very complex and featured synthesizer only as complicated as you need it in your particular patch. By the way, this is very similar to how I feel about Arturia Pigments, which was right at the top of last year's list. Vital has a free version, a $25 pretty heftily featured version, an $80 version, and also $5 a month subscription version that has a whole bunch of extra presets, a whole bunch of extra wavetables, and unlimited text to wavetable. What is text to wavetable? I am the 143rd synth to kill serum. The number one software innovation of the year for me is newfangled audios generate. At face value, generate is going to be able to create sounds that you've never been able to create in a VST instrument before. The types of synthesis that we're generally used to with VST plugins are subtractive, FM, additive, wavetable, and so on. What generate does is so unique that it's hard to describe from an audio dork perspective. We actually have to switch over into science mode for a second. What you're looking at right now is a double pendulum, which is used in physics quite frequently to try and understand chaos because very, very slight variations in how you initialize the motion of a double pendulum results in very different patterns. So the initial idea for this type of synthesis was rather than using a traditional periodic function like a sine wave or a saw wave, a double pendulum sped up to audio rate would be used for the oscillator. After a lot of mathematical tweaking to make this sound as harmonic as possible, four more innovative and creative oscillators were added. Rather than taking these innovative oscillators and putting them through a simple subtractive filter, Generate behaves more like a West Coast style synth and they go through wave folders that are based on everything from classic Buchla generators to fractals. Then comes modulation. There is a whole lot of it, both internally and with MPE support, and all internal modulation sources can generate multiple outputs at once. And if that's not enough for you, the reverb algorithms are totally new and exclusive to this plugin, and they're based on the writings of Michael Gerzen. What that gives us is, in my opinion, the most innovative synth plugin that I've seen in years. If you have an old laptop, don't plan on running four instances of this at once. Double pendulum oscillation mixed with West Coast synthesis is never going to be as efficient as a subtractive synth. However, that CPU tax for me is well worth it.
By the way, there is something that belongs somewhere on this list, but it's not gonna be announced until mid-December. If you're a computer musician and follow that sort of thing, you'll hear about it and then you'll think to yourself, oh, that's what my good friend Ben was unable to tell me about due to non-disclosure agreements. So the year's not over yet. I am only one man. I have not tried all of the music software that has come out in 2020, so why don't you tell me what I missed in the comments? I'm sure other people who watch this video would be happy to read through those and see what else they could check out. If you liked this video, if you learned anything, subscribe to my channel and click that little dinner Christmas bell next to it to get updates whenever I upload new content. If you want to see what I'm up to on a more frequent basis, then follow me on Instagram or Twitter. All of that is in my link tree. You know what else is in my link tree? Like 30 plus hours of my music. If you want to support me, I've heard some people say that it's pretty good. Give it a check it out. Finally, I know you don't like being preached to, but if you haven't gotten a flu shot yet, do your local healthcare workers a favor and just get one in your arm. It doesn't even hurt. You might even get a sticker afterwards. You get to post about it on Twitter or Instagram or whatever and virtue signal to everybody and then ask people, have you gotten your flu shot yet? And then be all righteous. It's a lot of fun. And also it'll prevent you from dying as easily, which is really nice. I can't believe I actually forgot to say bye where that clap sound is synced up to my hand. If you haven't noticed it yet, I actually spend a lot of time syncing up the last song to end perfectly on bye.